Did you date Bond right then? Jesus, William, when did you become such a drunk queen? Well, if he died really tragically, I could imagine a situation where I might turn to Bond Rant for support. Of course, that would lead to late-night conversations, emotions all of us, comforting hugs and whatnot. Eventually, there's a touch of a shoulder, a lingering glance. And in our fragile states, we would use each other to dull the pain of a friend lost. There's a slight reluctance at first, but as our mobile bodies writhe between the sheets and tangled bliss, the ecstasy growing with each tender thrust like a piston picking up steam in the hull of the ship. Harder and harder and faster and faster and harder and harder and harder and faster and harder and harder. I'm coming, I'm coming, I'm coming. So you thought about it. No, I'm, I'm saying in that situation, I can imagine something happening between us. You're saying yes. I'm saying you died tragically. I'm 24 years old. Tragically is the only way I can die for the next 30 years. Are you jealous of me and Bonner? There is no you and Bonner. Are you jealous of I don't know what? You know, I'm starting to get why your parents abandoned you. Nice, William. Real damn nice. I'm sorry, you know don't. I'm because you don't blow me enough? What? No. I don't think that. Why? Do you think that? No. No, nothing. It's just something you said before. Something I said before. Yeah, you said. I don't know if you But forget it. It's not important. When did I say that? Earlier, when we were talking about blowing Bondurant. We never talked about blowing Bondurant. Yes, we did. Earlier. I talked about it. Yeah, of course. That's what I meant, obviously. 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 I'm having Bondurant's abortion. 
Well, you asked, I'm telling you. So I said, not enough, apparently. Although, if there was ever a candidate for the first ever Pilate conception, I'm pretty sure we'd have a decent shot. I don't know what Jamie sees in you. Well, I never asked her, so. She must think you're funny. Sure, fine. Oh, that, that's it, you're funny. Say your funniest thing. What? Oh, make me laugh, or I'll think you're not funny. No. No, you know what? What about you? You've been sleeping on my couch for six months. Really, I, I don't know what Mitzi sees in a loser like you. I'm an artist, man. She's attracted to my solo. She didn't seem to mind when he wanted to leave her for Jamie. Mitzi may act cavalier, but I know the girl is devastated. Or maybe that artist solo of yours isn't quite cutting it in the big city. <laughs> I, I was kidding. I told you, William. The letter came last week and I told her. I told, told her what? I was admitted to Julia. <laughs> That's incredible. Congrats, buddy. It's a lie, William. It's a horrible, horrible lie. They don't want me. They gave me the best I had. I really did. And I nailed it. I nailed that audition. And still, they say no. I'm a fraud. No, you're not a fraud. I'm a big, fat fraud. You're very talented. No, please. No, no, it's true. You're just saying that so I won't make a dish. I'm not. I mean it. I always tell people about you. Who? Who, who do you tell about me? Just people that I know. Who do you tell them about me? Just how talented you are. Things like that. Do you tell them I'm self-taught? Do you tell them that part? Sure, of course I say you're self-taught. It's the most important part. You can't tell them that! Why not? It's very impressive. Oh, the trumpet scene is a fraternity, William. It's an exclusive little fraternity, just like everything else. It's all about where and with whom you trained. To be self-taught is to be a leper. Okay, someone will see your talent, Bonder, and it just takes time. Oh, you don't get it. You don't understand. You're not an artist. I'm a writer. Oh, nobody reads books anymore. Some people read. No one. Where are you going? This is our stop. You're pregnant? Transitorily. And, and it's Bondurant. Well, does he know? Of course he knows. Why do you think he wants to ditch me for you? I'm kidding, Jesus. He, you should tell him. Why? Show me the handbook. Show me the rule that says every stupid fucking pregnancy has to be disclosed to all material party. But what if he wants to, you know, have it? He got into Julia, Jamie. What? Tommy got accepted. Apparently they loved his audition compared him to a young big spider bag. Big Spiderback died at 20. There was only ever a young big Spiderback. Is that really the issue right now? You're being hysterical. This might be okay. I mean, maybe they have some sort of program, you know, for musicians with babies or something. Even some goddamn junior college for pregnant teen moms. This fucking truly art. I'm not gonna drop this on him right now. Even if I did want to keep it. Do you want to keep it? No. I mean, yeah. I mean, it's complicated. My family used to have Christmas dinner at Casa Santa Marta, for God's sake. Is that where the Pope was? But if I do tell him about this unholy growth in my apparently really fucking fertile uterus, he's gonna think I'm using it just to keep him in. I don't want him to think that. Oh, come on. You don't know that. Maybe he wants to get rid of the little sucker, too. You think? Yeah. Abortions are totally back in vogue. That brunch place around the corner grates the morning after fell into their omelets. That's not the issue. Then what's the issue? I don't know. Nothing? Can we just smoke, please? Sure, honey. Passion, William! I have no goddamn passion. What are we talking about? They give me feedback. Did you know that? Strong technically lacks passion. Where are we? Okay, with this. Is this Massey Hall? I want to see passion. Oh, I'll show the goddamn passion. What are you doing? When I was a child, my dad would take me to a male strip club a town over from us. If he was ever caught by an acquaintance or a work colleague, he would explain that he was not there for himself, but rather that I had been grabbing boys' penises in the showers at school and he wanted to scare me straight. That's, that's horrifying. After a while, I grew quite familiar with some of the staff. One in particular, a Korean dancer named Greg. He would trip the light fantastic to this brilliantly sexy jazz tune. It was entrancing. I've never heard anything like it. So one day, I removed a dollar from my dad's martini glass of dollars, walked up to the stage, placed the bill in his G-string and asked for the name of the artist. He said, come and see me after the show, little fucko. Dear God. That night, in Greg's private dressing room at the Galliancer, I became a man. The way a boy does when he listens to jazz for the first time. We grooved and cut and skipped to the sweet symphonic melodies of the Massey Hall Jazz Band Anthology in the time it took my father to be brought to climax in a nearby room for very important people. It was illuminative, William. And I was awake. I certainly hope so. On the drive home that night, I asked my dad, I said, Dad, how can I get to Nasty Hall? And despite the spiritous blood drenching his brain, my father took his eyes off the icy man and told him freeway and said something so simple, yet so profound, I knew it would follow me for the rest of my musical life. He said, practice, Bondurant. Practice. 
You know that's a very famous joke, right? What? No, it's not a joke, William. It's a special thing between me and my dad. Your entire life is based on an old vaudeville routine and the fancy tastes of a good-natured male stripper? It's based on a lie, William. I practiced. Just like you said, I practiced till my lips were bloody and raw, but it wasn't goddamn good enough. Now either help me break into Master Hall or go the fuck home. Put your weight into it. Not too much. There should be something for the doctor to do. You know, the Greeks had a word. Hocratic. Reluctance to do something we know is good for us. Not to be confused with Socratic. To do something we know is good that gets us beheaded. Actually, Socrates was poisoned by hemlock. <laughs> Those inhumane Athenian bastards. I just remembered. Never finished my story. Regale me. because he has cancer, I should let him have a poke around. He also says he wants double dives. Apparently a few fell on the floor a couple years ago and he's developed a taste. I mean, can you believe that? Forget the interspatial attraction, which frankly makes no sense to me, but here we are, mankind's first substantial encounter with the animal kingdom, and I'm expecting something profound. I mean, for God's sake, this pig was like an older brother to me. He could at least tell me he enjoyed our time together, that it was all going to be okay. Something like that. But all he wanted to do was eat and screw. I suppose I should have expected it. He is a pig after all. All right. Hand me my trumpet. Seriously, you have one job. To have my trumpet available at all times. Anyway, after he jerked himself off, we got to talking, which was fine, although most of it was spent convincing him that the mirror was in fact not another pig living in our apartment. He took that pretty hard. Apparently they were close. But before he died, there was something he said that I thought was so peculiar. And I know what you're going to say, it's a talking pig. Wasn't everything he said peculiar? Well, yes. But there was one thing, one thing that really stood out. He said he watched you and Bondurant having sex. That's right, Jamie. The pig squealed.